Praise the Lord, my sisters and brothers. I'm your sister in Christ, Michelle Rice. And this is a prayer connection where you make a connection with God. This is the prayer connection where you make a connection with heaven. Now, this show is designed to build you up, to strengthen you, and to encourage you to go into another level in your prayer life. Yes, it's designed by God to catapult you and launch you forward into another level in your prayer life. And we know that it's all done by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We give him all the praise, we give him all the glory, and we give him all the honor. Father God, we bless you today. We give you all the praise as we come together to pray. Father God, you said we're two or three are gathered together in my name. You said that you would be in the midst of us. So God, I believe by faith, oh God, that there's at least two or three listening now. So we know we have that promise. We have the promise of God is manifest in the two or three anointing. See, it don't take God a whole bunch of people to do stuff. He don't need a whole crowd, a whole bunch of folks to do anything. He said, I'll do it in the midst of the two or three. Where two or three are gathered together in my name. He said, there I am in the midst. So God, we thank you for the anointing of the two or three. That you are moving in the midst of the two or three. You're doing great miracles for the two or three. You're making great provision for the two or three. You're bringing joy unspeakable to the two or three. You're giving peace that's a past all understanding to the just to the two or three. He don't need a crowd. He don't need a multitude. God says, I'll do it in the midst of the two or three. Whosoever is calling upon my name in Jesus' name, he says, I'll be with you in the two or three. Where two or three are gathered together in my name, he says, there will I be in the midst. So, Father God, we thank you, Lord God, that you are in the midst of us right now, blessing us and keeping us and strengthening us, Lord God. Father, we ask you to have your way on this broadcast today. Whoever's listening today, I pray for them. I pray for your people today. Right where you at, God sent me to pray for you. In Jesus' name, he sent me to pray for you, your children, your family members, your loved ones, your community, your neighborhood. Today, in Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord God, that those that are listening today, that they are kept by the power of God. In the mighty name of Jesus, right in the midst of the pandemic, God is keeping you. We serve a God that's a keeper. He's a protector and a keeper. He's keeping your children in the school systems. He's keeping them in the name of Jesus. He's keeping your children, your young adults that went away to college in your family. He's right there keeping him. They're, he's keeping them in the mighty name of Jesus. He's a keeper. He says, he says I will keep them. He, they are kept by the power of God. And he's a protector in the name of Jesus. All of God's people, we dwell in the secret place of the Most High. We abide under the shadow of the Almighty. In this pandemic, we are abiding in the shadow of the Almighty. And when the enemy wanna comes our way, he get a detour. He has to detour your house in Jesus' name. When he sees the blood of Jesus over the doorposts, over the lintels of your home, the death angel got to pass over. I plead the blood of Jesus over your house right now. I plead the blood of Jesus over your property right now. I plead the blood of Jesus over your real estate right now. Over the doorposts, over the lentils. The Bible says, if you plead the blood of Jesus in the book of Exodus, over the doorposts, over the lentils, I'll cause the death angel to pass over. He won't be able to pass, pass, come in your home. He'll pass over your home. So I decree and declare a divine Passover. It's passing over your home today. Every time I pray, I decree and declare that there's a divine Passover in the mighty name of Jesus. Divine Passover. He's passing over us in Jesus' mighty name. And we give him praise for that. And we give him glory. We thank you, Father God, that all is well in the Father's house. All is well, all is well in the Father's house. Whatever you have need of is in the Father's house. If you need joy today, you can get it in the Father's house. Whatever you have need of is already prepared in the Father's house. John 14, 1 says, peace I leave you. And let not your heart be troubled, neither let, let it be afraid. He says, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you where I am, then you may be also. 
Yes, John 14, 1 says, Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. You believe in God? Jesus said, you believe also in me. He said, in my father's house, there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, he says, where I am, that you may be also. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. He seems talking about heaven. But I'm here to tell you today, there's not only a place prepared for you in, in heaven, there's a place prepared for you right here in the earth realm, on earth as it is in heaven. He has a prepared place for you in the earth realm, right here on planet earth. And everything you need here on planet earth, God says is already prepared because it's, it, it's considered you dwell in the Father's house. In earth, on this earth realm, you are in the Father's house and everything's prepared. All is prepared. Everything is prepared in the Father's house. Everything you have need of, every provision you have ever need of is in the Father's house. In the mighty name of Jesus. Which leads me to the topic of this broadcast. That God has given you the power to make wealth. He's given you the power to get wealth. Deuteronomy 18, Deuteronomy 8 Verse 17 says, And you shall say in your heart, My power and the might of my hand has gotten me this wealth. He says in the book of Deuteronomy, verse 17 of chapter 8, it says, And you shall say in your heart, My power and the might of my hand has gotten me this wealth. Verse 18 says, But you shall remember the Lord your God. For it is he that gives you power to get wealth. It is he that gives you power to get wealth. It is he that gives you power to get wealth. That he may establish his covenant, which he swear unto our fathers, as it is this day. And in the Yes, this verse is very powerful. He's not giving you the power to make wealth. And we all talk about power, power of the Holy Ghost. The Bible says in the book of Acts that they was all in one place and all them all they were all they was in the upper room and all in one place together, tearing and waiting, waiting and praying. And they said that it, it says that the, that the Holy Ghost came down like a mighty rushing wind. And he said that the Holy Spirit would give them power to speak in tongues. He says, You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you in the book of Acts. You shall receive power power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you will be witness. So we know about the power of the Holy Ghost coming upon us that causes us to be witnesses and the power of the Holy Ghost that come upon us in the name of Jesus. And we can speak in other tongues. That's the gift from God. We see we can we, the Holy Spirit will come upon us and all the things will happen. But how many people talk about that the power of the Holy Ghost coming upon you to so you have the power to get wealth. God wants you wealthy in this earth realm. He needs some divine philanthropists. He needs some divine kingdom, kingdom distributors. He needs you to be empowered to get wealth in Jesus' name. There's provision in the Father's house. He's giving you the power to make wealth. He's giving you the stamina to make wealth, the, the, the wherewithal to make wealth. He's giving you the strategy to get wealth, the strength to get wealth, the energy to get wealth, the talent to get wealth, the gift to get wealth, the ingenuity to get wealth. He's giving you the power to get wealth and to be successful in the earth realm. He's giving you power to be successful in the earth realm for the kingdom, for his kingdom's sake, in the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible also says in Proverbs 10, 12, he said that the blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich and addeth no sorrow. So he's giving us the power to get wealth. And then it also says in Proverbs 10, 22, that the blessing of the Lord, it makes you rich and addeth no sorrow. God does not mind you being rich. 
He doesn't mind you having increase. He doesn't mind you having wealth. He doesn't mind you having more than enough. It pleases the Father to, to bless you. It pleases the Father to give you wealth. It pleases the Father to give you riches. It pleases the Father to meet all your needs. He says that I'm Jehovah Jireh and I will supply all of your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. According to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus, not according to your bank account, not according to your wallet, not according to your purse, not according to your job, your second job, your third job. It's not according to that. He says, I'm providing you according to my riches in glory. In glory. In the heaven. So whatever God got in heaven, that's his accounting table. He says, according to his riches and glory, not according to you, not according to your savings account, not according to your retirement fund, not according to your rainy day fund. It's according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Yes, God, he wants to give us the power to get wealth, to establish his covenant. And the blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich and have no sorrow. It maketh rich. Just like the provisions according to his riches and glory, the blessing makes you rich and add no sorrow. It adds no sorrow. So if God has given you riches, if God has given you wealth, it's God has given you provision, it shouldn't have any sorrow to it. I'm here to tell you, if you got four or five jobs and you barely can read the Bible, you barely can talk to God, you ain't got no strength, it's you stressed out and anxious and worried and you ain't got no stamina, you ain't got no power to do anything, you ain't got no rest, that let me know that might not be the blessing of the Lord. Because Proverbs 10, 22 says that the blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich and addeth no sorrow. If your, if your riches that you receive, your wealth that you have is causing you sorrow, then it's not the blessing of the Lord. Because the blessing of the Lord only makes you rich and he adds no sorrow, no toil. Now we know our jobs might not be all easy. You know, we have responsibilities and we have to work and things can, can get a little overwhelming at times because of the case load we have to do or all our responsibilities. But it shouldn't just be a weighty spirit of sorrow on you because the blessing of the Lord maketh rich and addeth no sorrow. No sorrow. So that lets you, that lets you gauge it. That lets you kind of get a bearing or is it a blessing of the Lord or did I bless myself or the devil bless me because the devil will bless you with riches and it's going to be attached with sorrow you can bless your own self but it's going to be attached with sorrow only the blessing of the Lord makes rich and have no sorrow in the name of Jesus Father God we give you praise bless your people with the wealth God in the name of Jesus bless them because the ble let the blessing come upon them right now the blessing of the Lord with that's making them rich and add of no sorrow in the mighty name of Jesus Father God we thank you Lord God that you are Jehovah Jireh for them you are their provider and you're supplying all of their need according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus I thank you Lord God that you've given them the power to make wealth to establish your covenant you've given them the power to make make wealth, the stamina to make wealth in the mighty name of giving them the strength to make wealth, the energy to make wealth, the gifting to make wealth, the anointing them to make wealth, the, 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 the glory of God on them to make wealth, the open doors for them to make wealth, the opportunities for them to make wealth. You guess what you give them today? You give them the power to make wealth. Now, if you really want supernatural increase, I mean supernatural increase. If you really want supernatural increase, start giving a tenth of your income to God. If you want supernatural increase and not a low level increase, supernatural, start giving a tenth of your income to God. That's what a tithe is. It's a tenth of your income, your tenth off of your gross income. He says in Malachi 310, he says, bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. Prove me or test me now herewith, and see when I not open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that they have not room enough to receive. Then he went on to say, then I will rebuke the virus for your sake. So if you're the kind of person that gets their paycheck, get their, get their monies, and you give a tenth to God first, 
to bless his household, to bless the church of the living God, to stay open, keep the lights on, keep the bills going, keep the heat going in the, in the winter, keep the air going in the summer, to make sure things all is all, all prepared in God's house, the physical things that our church needs. If you are partaker of that by giving a tenth of your in income to the church that you're getting fed at, he said, I will open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you will have not room enough to receive. And then he went on to say, I will rebuke the devourer for your sake it's a guarantee god says you won't lose money money won't fall through your through your pockets it won't be holding your pockets and all your money flying out the car won't be breaking out every day johnny won't break his tooth and you gotta take him to the dentist and spend extra money that wasn't included in the insurance you won't get a a, a, a flat tire your clothes will last and look good from year to year they won't wear out. Your shoes won't wear out. In Jesus' name, you'll be blessed. You'll be blessed. You won't have the devourer be tearing up everything you get. As soon as you get money, it ain't going out the window. As soon as you get money, it ain't going down the toilet. He said, I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. That spirit that wants to that still kill, still all your income and steal your wealth and rob you. He said, I won't let that happen to you because you're giving a tenth to me. A tenth of your income is being tithed unto the kingdom of God. He said, I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. He will rebuke the it won't it won't come your way. You won't have you won't have diminish, you have replenishing of your income. It won't be a diminish, but it'll be a replenish. And the he you will live under an open heaven where all the blessing of the Lord can run you over and overtake you. That the blessing of the Lord will make was it will cause you to be rich and have no sorrow. You have need of nothing. The world might be in a famine, but you're gonna have provision. The world might be in a shortage, but you're gonna have provision. The, the world might be in lack and not enough, but you have more than enough because you are a tither and a giver. He said, Give and it shall be given to you good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall mean given to your bosom. You have always have more than enough, more enough for yourself and your family and for others. The kingdom, you have you have more than enough. I'm a living witness. Now it's going to read um Psalms 37:4. It says, Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Father God, we thank you, Lord God, that you said if we delight ourselves in you, that you will give us the desires of our heart. So that means, Father God, that not only will our needs be met, Father God, but our desires are getting met. See, God does not just want to bless you with your needs being met. He want to give you some of those desires, things that you just want. You don't need it, but you want it. You want that new dress. You don't need it. You got plenty of dresses in the closet, but I, want, I just want that new dress. He said, if you delight yourself in the Lord, he will give you the desires of your heart. Another provision in the Father's house, that power to get wealth. Delight yourself in the Lord's saints, and God says, I will give you the size of your heart. Anybody that delights himself in God, God will give them the desires of their heart in the mighty name of Jesus. He said he will withhold no good thing to those who walk uprightly, according to Psalms 84, 11. He, said, he says, I, I will withhold no good thing for those who walk uprightly. You walk upright before God, and he will not withhold anything from you. He, he, says, he says his arms will be open. The blessing of the Lord will run you over and overtake you. You'll live under open heaven. The floodgates of heaven will be open. The windows of heaven will be open over your life and your family's life because you're their covering. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, according to Deuteronomy 8.18, he'll give you the power to make wealth. And a faithful man will abound in blessings. If you're faithful unto God, you're faithful with your finance and being a good steward over your financial affairs, he says that you will abound in blessing according to Proverbs 28, 20. Proverbs 28, 20 says a faithful man will abound with blessing. When you get your finances, get your income, get your increase, you give God money. You bless, you, you take, you, you bless the house of God. You bless your family. You bless people. You, you do good and you saving money. That's part of being a good steward. That's part of being a good manager over your money. Every time you get money, you ain't just go splurge it at the mall to get on the internet and start start uh, ordering everything. Some of that money is to save for 
Yes. Be like Joseph. Joseph in the Bible, he saved. He, he, when it was a time of plenty, he saved. And then when it was a time of famine, they had provision. So you always save. You don't spend all your money. And you don't want to give all your money away either. You save some of them. You pay your tithe. You save some. And you, and you take care of your bills and give. You keep doing them cycles. You will abound in blessing. A faithful man will abound in blessing. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, be a good steward of your finances. Proverbs 10, 14 says, He becomes poor that deals with a slack hand, but the hand of the diligent maketh rich. Now, if God would give you the power to make wealth, and you getting, you got the power, because we done prayed that. Father God, right now, I decree and declare that everyone's listening, that you are releasing it to them the power to make wealth. And when you receive the power to make wealth, because you have it now, we just prayed, we just opened our mouth, we just spoke the word, so shall our words be, that go forth out of our mouth, it will not return unto us void, but it will be pleased and prosper unto the thing to where we send it. We done sent the word to you, that you got the power to make wealth, death and life is the power of our tongue, and they that love it, eat the fruit thereof. We done sent the word, we spoke the word. So now you have the power to make wealth, but then once you get the wealth, you got you to gotta be a good steward and keep it and use it as the way God says so. You keep it until God tells you what to do with it. He'll tell you to tithe first. He'll tell you to save. He'll tell you to give. But you don't just run with it. You always ask him. Trust in the Lord and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. He'll direct your paths. You keep it and you ask God, what should I do with this money? And he will lead you and guide you into all truth. And then you have to, to sustain your income, especially of those that have businesses like myself, I have my own business. You might have your own business. You might have, you have jobs and, and things that you do for, to, to, to uh, earn income. You have to be diligent in it. Because it says in Proverbs 10, 4, he becomes poor that deals with a slack hand. The hand of the diligent maketh the rich. So if you want to be diligent, if you want to be rich, you got to be diligent. You got to stick with it. You got to be faithful. The New Living Translation of Proverbs 10, 4 says, lazy people are soon poor. Hard workers get rich. Let that sink in. Lazy people are soon poor. Hard workers get rich. <laughs> I'm a hard worker. I'm going to get rich. You a hard worker, you're going to get rich. God going to continue to promote you and promote you and promote you. Increase you and increase you. I pray right now for supernatural increase, increase coming upon them right now. In the name of Jesus, supernatural increase, supernatural increase being released through their ways right now. Rasha Yetelobosa, giving them the power to make wealth in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father God, I thank you, Lord God, that they, as they delight themselves in you, that you are giving them desires of their heart, Father God. In the name of Jesus, as they are tithers and givers, oh God, you open up the windows of heaven and pour them out blessings that they have not room enough to receive. And you are rebuking the devour for their sake, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father God, we praise you. We glorify your name. We thank you, oh God. They are faithful to you, Father God. And a faithful man would abound in blessings. The blessing of the Lord will run them over and overtake them, Lord God. The blessing of the Lord will make them rich and add of no sorrow. No sorrow. No sorrow. Yes, God's given you the power to make wealth. You got to be diligent. Can't be lazy. Because Thessalonians 3.10 says, a man don't work, you don't eat. You say, well, I'm retired. I don't work. Yes, you do. You doing? You should be doing something that God is telling you. That's work. It don't have to be a secular job. It don't have to be a business. If, if you retire, you should be working for the Lord, doing something. You shouldn't be just sitting at home eating candy and eating donuts, watching TV all day. Something he's telling you to do. That's work. And if you don't work, you ain't going to eat. You should be working for the Lord. You got to work the works of him who has sent you while it's yet day. Because when night come, no man can work. 
You be you are working for the Lord. Whether you have a secular job, a business, retire, you should be working for the Lord. Something you, you should be doing that He's told you to do. Because if you don't work, you don't need. Not in this kingdom. Let me let that sink in. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now we think about working, getting wealth, saving, managing our money, being a good steward, being faithful. But you know what? God wants you to some of that money that you are that you do possess, He wants you to use it just for fun. It's okay. Let's read on. Uh, 1 Timothy 6, 17. He said, command those that are rich in this present world not to be arrogant nor to put their hope in wealth which is so uncertain but to put their hope in God who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. Isn't that a blessing? In 1 Timothy 6, 17 in the NIV version it says, command those that are rich in this present world. Not to be arrogant. Nor to put their hope in wealth. Which is so uncertain. But to put their hope in God. Who richly gives us. Provides us with everything for our enjoyment. So some of that money. God wants you to simply enjoy it. You a hard worker. You work for God. You're working. You're doing. You're doing your diligence. You you're faithful in the ways God calls you to do. You 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 you're giving money as you sow in seed in, in in the things of God. You sow in seed to the poor. You sow in seed to your family. You're giving to the church. Some of that money He wants you to do. He says He says He will richly provide us with everything for our enjoyment. It's okay to celebrate life, celebrate Christ, celebrate you. Celebrate life, celebrate Christ, celebrate you. Celebrate life, celebrate Christ, celebrate you. Let's read uh, 1 Timothy 6.17 in the New Living Translation. It says, teach those who are rich in this world not to be proud nor trust in their money. Which is so unreliable. Their trust should be in God. Who richly gives us all we need for our enjoyment. Thank you, Jesus. He says, teach those who are rich in this world. Not to be proud. Not to be proud. Nor trust in their money. Which is so unreliable. But their trust should be in God who richly, richly, richly gives us all we need for our enjoyment. My God. My God. My God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. So remember today, saints. God has released unto you the power to get wealth. So I want you to go forward in the increase of the Lord. God's going to replenish you, not diminish you. He will increase you more and more, you and your children. In Jesus' name. He wants to take you a land of poverty and poorness to richness. Now, if you don't know Jesus Christ, you are poor. You might not be poor in your finances, but you're poor in spirit. You need Jesus. Your spirit is poor if you don't know Jesus Christ, if you're not saved. So let me take you in a, and lead you and guide you in a prayer that will take you from being poor in spirit to rich in spirit because you receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Let me lead you. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm a sinner. And he did Savior. You said, if I confess in my mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead, I will be saved. With my mouth, I just confessed it. With my heart, I believe it. Bam. Simple prayer. If you pray that simple prayer, you were born again believer. Start reading your Bible. 
Start talking to God in prayer and ask God to lead you to a good church that's teaching the word of God. So you, so you can be rich in spirit and watch God increase you, increase you in the natural. Because God is a rich God, spiritually, mentally, financially, in every realm. We serve a rich God. All is well in the Father's house. Everything you have need of is in the Father's house. Bye-bye.